All right, this is a pretty neat exercise. Um, this is kind of one of those neat examples that you get when you're studying these for the first time and you're trying to see, oh, what are some examples of things that kind of go against your basic intuition? And a lot of these end out to be really cool. So basically the main idea is what we're going to do is we're going to take the interval from, or the uh, rectangle zero one, going to break up into fourths and choose a point in each of these then break it up further and choose a point in each of these and then um, keep going further and further and eventually what's going to end up happening is you're basically going to get points all over this um, grid here um, but because of how they're chosen you can avoid them getting um, too close to each other. Um, and by that I mean you can make it so that you can fit a rectangle around each one. So anyways, um, so for all n and n, define 2 to the n plus 1 subsets of the closed rectangle 0 1 squared this is just zero this is just this set um, I'm just using the squared to mean that you multiply by itself but here multiplication means product like this product anyways subsets of this um, by and then Q I comma J to the n it's defined to be equal to, by the colon, I mean that this thing on the left here is going to be defined to be equal to the thing on the right. It's going to be this closed in or this half open interval times this one. And this is for i and j between 1 and 2 to the n. Choose some element x, i, j, n, in q, i, j, n, such that x does not lie on the same vertical or horizontal um, of x s t s t to the k for any. Um, then I'm going to write this. This is kind of a little bit of a confusing um, requirement. So for k less than n, we need s and t to be anything between 1 and uh, 2 to the k and hmm yeah and then for k equals n we want to look at all s less than or equal to i and t less than or equal to j but of course we don't want to really look at the um, uh, the case of s equals i and t equals j because that's just the case that we're already defining and so it doesn't really make sense. But I'm not going to add that third requirement in there because we've already got enough words as it is in here. Um, so anyway, basically you're choosing, what, what you're doing is you're choosing these x, s, t, k's. You're starting with k equals 1 and then you choose them for all combinations of s and t. Then you move on to k equals 2, choose them all. Then k equals 3, choose them all. And every time you choose one, you make sure that it doesn't lie on the same vertical or horizontal as any of the previous ones you've chosen. That's basically what I'm getting at here. Um, also, now that I'm looking at it, since s and t are between 1 and 2 to the k, it looks like what I need is instead of there being... Um, 
to the n plus 1 subsets, it's actually, well, we have 2 to the k possibilities for s and 2 to the k possibilities for t, so it would be 2 to the 2n, I guess. But, I mean, I really don't care how many sets there are. I, I, this, this, this whole this number of subsets here is kind of unnecessary, and it's only causing me confusion. So I'm just going to get rid of it. Um, because it's not useful in our proof, so why clutter the proof with stuff that we don't need and causes confusion? And e even, yeah, yeah, it, it's just superfluous. So, um, then why is this possible? Why are we able to choose x? Ooh, and actually, my wrist is starting to hurt a little bit. I thought I could get through this video without the uh, wrist thingy, but this is turning out to not be the case. So just so that my hand can, my wrist can heal a little faster, I'll put it back on. So you might see a sudden drop in my um, writing goodness. What's the word for that? Eh, legibility, there we go. Anyways, um, so why is this possible? This, yeah, I'm already writing like no, just kidding. Okay, so this is possible since we are making finitely many restrictions on each coordinate and each coordinate of x, i, j, n and we have uncountably many points to Choose from. Now this seems like it'd be a really um, easy thing to say like, oh, well, we're obviously only taking out very few, but you have to be careful here because when I first thought of this, I was just like, oh, well, we're only making um, a small number of exclusions. But if you actually look at this, this set here, say we're looking at this QIJ, um, so this is going to be from like I to I plus one, or rather I minus one to I, this will be from j minus 1 to j, um, or it'd be 2 to the minus n, whatever. Whatever the endpoints are supposed to be. We're looking at a square, basically. And basically what we're doing is we're taking a whole bunch of uh, vertical and horizontal lines that we're excluding from what we had before. And you can't just say, oh, well, we have uncountably many things left, because you're actually excluding, you're excluding lines, and lines are uncountable sets, so you can't really make a cardinality argument in that sense. What you have to look at is you have to look at how many um, horizontal possibilities you're excluding and how many vertical possibilities you're excluding, and you're excluding a finite number of those. So it's not really about what's happening in here, it's more about how many of these, how many of the lines you have, not the sets that the lines are excluding, if that makes sense. Um, that was a little more like of an intuitional and hand wavy explanation, so if it doesn't make sense, ignore it and just look at this. And note that you have to say finitely many restrictions on each coordinate. And that's a way to make this a really rigorous statement. Okay, so then um, let A equal... So once we've done this process for all possible N and N, let A be the union of these sets. So the union overall um, n and n and now the, yeah, so so the union of all of these xij n's for n 
natural number, j from 1 to 2 to the n, i from 1 to 2 to the n. Um, I claim delta a is equal to 0, 1 squared. Now, these are sets, so how do you prove equality of sets? You prove by inclusion. So, clearly, delta A is a subset of 0, 1 squared. And that's because, del that's because A is a subset of the closed interval from 0, 1 to 0, 1. So, the boundary of A is going to be contained in the closure of A, which is going to be contained in the closure of 0, 1 squared, which is 0, 1. Ah, let's write that out, because delta A is contained in closure of A, which is contained in the closure of 0, 1 squared, which is equal to 0, 1, since 0, 1 is closed. Man, now that I think about it, Spivak might have gone away with defining boundary without talking about closures. Um, so I'm just going to put this thing in parentheses here. If you haven't talked about closure, then don't worry about it. And this is probably straightforward enough that you can just put it. Um, I need a little more room here. Okay. So clearly this... So then, um, next, let's take some point x in 0, 1 squared. Let R be an open rectangle. containing x. See here. Um, then if here here's how we're going to do this. If we let r prime equal r intersect 0 1 squared then r prime is uh, rectangle containing x. That's basically because um, the fact that it contains x is obvious since both r and 0, 1 squared contain x and that's a rectangle is, well, this is the intersection of two rectangles. And I'm pretty sure we talked about that in a previous exercise. But even if we haven't, it's pretty obvious that two Rect that um, two rectangles that intersect non-trivially are going to give you a rectangle. Um, so anyways, our prime is a rectangle containing x, and then um, so our prime contains some Q, I, J, N. And this is this is kind of easier by a picture. I mean, like, if you have a square here and this is your R prime, then if you break it up, if you great break the grid up small enough, then you'll get something that's in here. I don't think there's really much more of a proof here that's necessary. Perhaps you might do something along the lines of, okay, so say R prime is uh, a rectangle and the width is A and the height is B, then choose N large enough so that 2 to the minus N is less than, like say, I don't know, maybe you have to make it less than 1 fourth times the minimum of A and B, and that might work, but I mean, I don't, I don't think that's really necessary here to write out that much detail. I think it's fine to just say that R prime contains some QIJN. And it's pretty obvious that that should hold since you just make the grid arbitrarily small by choosing an arbitrarily large. Okay? See here. 
So xijn is in A and it's in R. We, we also know, what else do we know? It's here. We know QIJN is uncountable. And A, well, A is just a countable union of singleton sets, so it's countable. So, so QIJN, and thus QIJN comma, and thus R contains some element of a complement. So this means that so the so um, we found a point in this uh, open rectangle R that contains um, that intersects with A and we found a point in this open rectangle that intersects with A complement and this holds for all R containing X for all open rectangles R containing X but I won't write that so what does that mean? so X is in the boundary of A. But this holds for all x in um, this interval 0 to 1. Hence, um, 0, 1 squared is contained in delta A, but we know the, the reverse, we, we talked about already how the reverse um, inclusion holds, and so the boundary of A is equal to this rectangle. And there we go. We have completed this proof.